live from the NBC6 studios, this is South Florida Today. When you think of LASIK eye surgery, you probably envision a procedure done completely with lasers. Well, that isn't completely true, or at least it wasn't until now. Joining me today is Dr. Corey Lesner from the Millennium Laser Eye Centers and his patient, Laura Dice, who's using a new procedure, a new procedure called Intralace. Is that how you pronounce yes, it? Intralace. Intralace. Okay, for first, welcome, Doc. Thank welcome, you. Thank Laura. you for having us. What is Intralace, and how in the world is that different from LASIK? Okay. Well, intralase is, most people don't know that LASIK is a two-step procedure, uh, the creation of a flap and then the delivery of laser energy to sculpt the cornea to a, a new shape that will allow light to focus on the eye so we don't need the glasses or, or contact lenses. You know what, let, let, let me call for some tape here because we actually have an animation of how this works. Okay. So why don't you d describe it while we're looking at the okay. animation. Okay. Um, we couple the laser to the eye and the eye is completely numbed with topical anesthetic. The patient feels a little bit of pressure and then um, this really incredible laser, a femtosecond laser, delivers 15,000 pulses per second uh, to create little tiny bubbles that connect and uh, then we, it, it allows us to lift the flap again all laser. So there are no blades that are used uh, in this style of procedure. Mm -hmm. It also allows us to make the flap with much greater precision so that we can make the flaps thinner and help patients like Laura in ways that we haven't been able to uh, before this. Okay, time. now prior to this, are you saying that in addition to laser there were also blades used? It, it was a blade to create the flap. Okay. And then the patient would have laser delivery to, to sculpt. Okay, Laura, you had this surgery four months ago? I did. How did it go? It was unbelievable. I was scared out of my mind to do it. I had set glasses in second grade. I've never been able to see. I had a baby about a year and a half ago, and for the first three months of his life, life I slept with glasses on so I could see him next to the bed when he woke up in the bassinet. It was a completely life-changing experience. What was your vision problem prior to surgery? I was uh, minus nine in both eyes. Uh, so in late terms? I mean, it really bad. I couldn't I see mean, the alarm clock. I couldn't see if you far? were... What about far? I couldn't see far at so all. So you had far and from, close? From this point out, I couldn't see at all. And now? So And now I have 20-20 vision. And I was not a candidate for this surgery prior to this new procedure that he has. That's so it. I've been told for years that it's, my eyes are just too bad. Well, hang on here, because you and I are in the same boat. <laughs> right. Um, an awful lot of people in this newsroom have had LASIK surgery, including my co-anchor Pam Giganti. She's thrilled with the results. But Pam's problem was far vision. I, I can read a teleprompter without glasses, but I need to put my glasses on to be able to read a script. And I th always not thought, I knew that this did not work. They, they could do one eye for one way and the other eye for the other way, and I didn't want any part of that. So. Is everything changed now with this new procedure? Are you saying that I am a candidate? People like me are a candidate? I think a lot of people don't know that they're candidates, and this comes up a lot. Um, this whole issue of reading that comes in in our early to mid 40s, um, it's not an intuitive kind of thing. And, and people who have been exposed to what's called monovision with contact lenses with their eye care provider um, are often shown a more extreme form of monovision. Um, I tried that with the contacts and right. I, was, I was dizzy for a day and I said, that's it, <laughs> right. not for me. What we do is it's, it's all about levels. Uh, you know, a greater percentage of the population will tolerate what we we'll call modified monovision or mini monovision in much lower forms than would typically be tried by an eye doctor in contact lenses. Um, we had a, a, a news anchor from another station who had had an identical problem and he was convinced that monovision wouldn't work and he stopped in the center and we showed it to me said I love this he said I said that's monovision he said no that's not monovision I said yeah he said well you know and I said I don't know what they tried but uh, so it's it's not something that you know and it's not um, designed to make distance blurry it's supposed to be imperceptible to the patient and so you can't know without trying. If I said, uh, should we make uh, one eye blurry and one eye clear, you say, mm -hmm. no, I don't want that. I want both right. eyes clear. I'll wear reading glasses anyway, but uh, it's really not like that. Okay, a couple of quick things that we need to get out of the way. What does this thing cost as compared to the old-fashioned LASIK? And, and by the way, I know that there's cheap LASIK and expensive LASIK. I mean, I've seen ads for like seven ninety-five an eye. It's, it's never that, but... That's, but uh, did you, you want see, me to answer that question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you. Yeah. Um, it, you know, I, I think that uh, it, it's all about value. And um, you're basically uh, um, 
t talking everything included uh, runs somewhere in the range between five and six thousand dollars using the newer technology um, but you know if you were to go in for a, a car you wouldn't you know say oh that's forty thousand dollars you'd say you know I can afford three hundred dollars a month and mm -hmm. I think people need to think in terms of how much the glasses and the contact lenses and the solutions and the enzymes and all the things things cost uh, cost analysis shows that these surgeries right. will take care of themselves in seven to ten years. All right. Now, what about those uh, like me who have a fear that they are going to be one of the few that develops a problem? Okay. Uh, you'd have to define problem. There really are no well, few. You, well, I've never hear, had a patient lose their vision. You hear, I've never you hear had people a, sometimes. One of the problems is that people develop uh, uh, rings at night after the surgery and it, with, on, with oncoming headlights, things like that. That's where the other part of the laser procedure comes in. Uh, we have one of a few lasers in the country developed by a German company uh, called Wavelight. It's called the Allegretto because it's exceedingly fast. 200 pulses per second, uh, which is uh, roughly four to ten times faster than any other laser on the market. And it allows us to sculpt out much wider than we've been able to and uh, really reduce a lot of these problems that people were having with Halo and right, We're out of time. I need a yes or no on this one. Are yes. you the only center that does this? Uh, we're the only center in South Florida. You have to go to Jacksonville to find okay. another center that does it. All right. Doc, thanks very, very nice much. To meet Laura, you. thank you. Thank Congratulations. You For more information about Millennium Laser Eye Centers and Intralace, log on to our website at NBC6.net. And once you're there, click on South Florida today and we'll connect you.